How's it going, guys? So we have a very basic slash easy past level vignette for pathology slash biochemistry slash neuro for step one in combination with difficult answer choices. Uh, so A times B equals a constant medium difficulty question. I will be as concise as I can in terms of addressing this question here. So before we get started, I will be a quick asshole. Tell you to subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the actual question here where we've got this seven-year-old boy recently emigrated from Ukraine. He has incoordination on stable gate for three weeks. So we have a nonspecific neuropathy in a pediatrics case. He's had bulky stools for three years. This is very buzzy. Uh, for the USMLE saying steatorrhea, so fat malabsorption, he's had recurrent bacterial pneumonia since the age of one year. So recurrent pneumonias plus GI malabsorption is cystic fibrosis until proven otherwise. So far, very easy, very basic, as I said. And uh, he has failure to thrive, which means uh, below the third centile for weight and height. And this is due to the fat malabsorption, okay? So uh, deficient nutritional status. And he has diffuse wheezes, heard auscultation of the lungs. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, we're going to have uh, pulmonary disease. And ECG shows right bundle branch block. This is a difficult detail. This is the USMLE's way of saying right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, uh, so obviously cystic fibrosis will cause uh, pulmonary hypertension, which will lead to increased afterload on the right ventricle, and then our ensuing right ventricular hypertrophy. He does not yet have overt core pulmonale. He does not have JVD, peripheral edema, hepatosplenomegaly. He does not have overt right heart failure. He merely has a right ventricular hypertrophy, incipient. Neurologic exam shows loss of proprioception, deep tendon reflexes. So you say, hmm, why the fuck is there neuropathy? This is vitamin E deficiency. Okay. Very high yield for USMLE. It's all over the NBME exams. Okay. You say really vitamin E deficiency of all things. Yeah. It's not my opinion. It's on the NBME exams. We're currently, so we're going to have exocrine pancreas insufficiency. Okay. Uh, where we have, uh, an inability of the pancreas to secrete enzymes into the duodenum. That's why we have fat malabsorption. So all dogs eat kittens, ADEK, uh, vitamin E deficiency can cause neuropathy similar to B12 deficiency. So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Uh, choice A, defective hydroxylation, wrong fucking answer. This refers to vitamin C deficiency. Okay, vitamin C is a cofactor for hydroxylase enzymes. So uh, collagen, synth collagen synthesis, as well as uh, catecholamine synthesis, okay, uh, dopamine beta hydroxylase. So very high yield for vitamin C deficiency for scurvy, okay? Wrong fucking answer in this case. Choice B, defective neural crest cell migration, wrong, but very buzzy, okay? Uh, I put that in there purposely because, I mean, this is an, a frequent answer on USMLE for a variety of pathologies, including Hirschsprung, okay? Obviously, this is not Hirschsprung. You can get meconium ileus and cystic fibrosis, failure to pass stool in the first 24 hours of life, uh, but not to be confused with Hirschsprung, which is a failure of neural crest migration, okay? Defective neural crest migration is also the answer for something very fucking obscure, obscure called double cortex syndrome, uh, which shows up on the step one, as well as congenital heart defects, okay, um, in DeGeorge syndrome, as well as fetal alcohol syndrome, defective neural crest migration, high yield. Choice C, diminution of anterior horn neuronal mass. This would be polio, classically, uh, RNA virus, okay, uh, picornaviridae, um, but Wrong fucking answer in this case, all right? It can also be wardening hoffman syndrome, okay? We're getting into obscurities now. Choice D, pulses paradoxus, aka paradoxical pulse, wrong answer. This would be seen in cardiac tamponade classically. Yes, it can be seen in, uh, in very severe uh, lung disease cases, severe asthma, but we don't want to go uh, reading between the lines, okay? If we have cardiac tamponade, uh, they're going to give us a Beck triad, so low blood pressure, muffled heart sounds, JVD, and you can get a drop of blood pressure, systolic blood pressure greater than 10 millimeters of mercury with inspiration. Um, I have never seen a question on USMLE with paradoxical pulse. That's not cardiac tamponade, okay? Um, when we discuss the notion of seeing it in severe lung disease, such as asthma, um, it's more just hypothetical. It's not something that actually uh, will show up on the exam. Choice E, upregulation of ENAC is the correct answer. Very fucking difficult answer choice, okay? So we have a defective chloride channel, CFTR, in cystic fibrosis. So when we talk about uh, the pancreas, we are going to have an inability to secrete chloride from the, the pancreatic acinar cells 
into the lumen of the pancreatic ducts. So decreased chloride moves into the lumen. So we're going to have increased chloride, increased negative charge within the acinar cell. Then we're going to have sodium, which is positively charged within the lumen of the pancreatic ducts, moving into the pancreatic acinar cell to balance charge. So positively charged sodium from the lumen, ENAC, will be upregulated. That positive charge moves into the acinar cell to meet the negative charge. Water follows sodium. So we get what's called inspissated secretions, dried out secretions. Inspissation means desiccation within a lumen, okay? So our pancreatic secretions very dry, and that leads to inability to secrete lipases and proteases adequately into the duodenum, which causes our fat soluble vitamin malabsorption, okay? This also occurs in the lungs. This is why we get uh, stickiness within the alveolar spaces. The opposite occurs in the sweat glands, okay? So chloride would normally be reabsorbed rather than secreted, and then sodium will stay in the lumen of the um, of the sweat glands, and we get increased uh, sweat chloride, okay? Uh, that's obviously very high yield. A positive sweat chloride test greater than 60 milliequivalents per liter is diagnostic for cystic fibrosis. This could be a lengthy discussion, okay? Autosomal recessive, chromosome 7, uh, CFTR is going to be a misfolded protein, often a missense mutation that normally should be at the cell surface, but will instead be sequestered within the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cytosol. Many, many talking points, okay? Uh, but uh, defective, uh, sorry, upregulation of ENAC, this is important, okay? Uh, and this is why we have the inspissated secretions in cystic fibrosis. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.